Howdy, welcome to the third episode of Behind the Vibes, where today I have a video that's good for both percussionists and composers. Today I'll be discussing what you can use to whack the vibes with. Before we begin, I'd like to say again, thank you to my patrons for helping support the channel. If you'd like to be like any of my patrons, you can head over to patreon.com slash briankscole or through the link in the description. So on this channel, I've mainly focused around certain vibraphone mounts and how you can use those in your stick bag to get the sounds that you desire. But today I have some newer ideas that might help stimulate your mind when you're coming up with some sounds on the vibraphone. All these things that we're using to hit the vibes with today are going to be non-marimba or vibraphone mallets. So we're going to go a bit outside of the normal stick bag here. This will range from other percussion mallets to some everyday objects, which I'll discuss a bit more at the end though. Now of course one thing you can use to get some sounds out of the vibes are just your hands. Now this can go from flicking on the bars, tapping on them, running your nails on there, maybe pulling your hands across the resonators, snapping the cords a bit, really anything that you can do with tapping it, flicking it. Anything works. So our second classification we have here are plastic, rubber, and latex mallets. So some of these can be marimba mallets, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about them, but I think that they're worth talking about. Others are xylophone mallets, or what's considered a soft glock mallet, or I have one mallet here, this is a Vic Firth M130, this is kind of supposed to be like a xylophone for marimba mallet, so it's soft plastic. but. I think it sounds pretty cool in the vibes. Of course, as we're going along with not only these mallets and every other type of genre that we're talking about, I'm gonna put up the exact brand of these mallets and what they are, as well as some similar mallets to them as well. So the third section we have is brushes. So I definitely think every percussionist should have a good set of brushes, whether you are a kit player, a classical player, or a jazz vibes player, it's always helpful to have a set of brushes on hand. So all these brushes are Vic Firth, and some, like this one, they're a lot stiffer. This is the Legacy brush. It's a lot stiffer than the Heritage brush here. And then I also have some plastic jazz rakes. I can't remember the exact model of these, but I'll throw it up on the screen for when I use them. Each of these brushes has a slightly different tone because of the stiffness or material of the brushes. So I like to drag them across the bars, across the resonators, give little taps here and there, and I like the sound that I can create with them. Now some brushes that I don't have here are some that would have beads on the end or a heavy end, like the Vic Firth Dreadlock brushes. With those, I'd say be a little careful with hitting them too hard on the bars, as well as dragging them a little lighter, just so you don't cause some damage.
So the fourth section will be taking a look at our timpani mallets and I decided to also include a bass drum beater in this as well. So I have a couple different timpani mallets here just to give you some ideas. All these are felt, well except these ones, but they are now. So I really like how the cartwheel mallet sound on the vibes. I think that's actually a really cool sound as well as using this Vic Firth kick beater. So for this fifth section, I have something I think a lot of us percussionists have a large amount of. Those of course are drumsticks. So I only really featured three types of drumsticks here. We have some Peter Erskine ride sticks, so a bit of a smaller head. I have my SD1 General, so a bit more of a rounder head. Then for fun, I have my chop out sticks with a fun rubber head. I recommend trying out with these with vibes. I had a lot of fun just noodling around while I was recording this. And again with like the harder timpani mallets as well as the hard plastic mallets, be careful playing with wooden tips, they can damage the bars. I played rather lightly. So these smaller tip sticks, the Peter Skin Rides, I really like actually how they sound on the vibes. I think if you use something like chopsticks in the same type of style that I was using these for, you can come up with some really cool sounds. So in a similar family with drumsticks, I have some rods here. I have some wooden rods that are very fine tip from Promark. I have some plastic rods that you can adjust the tips with, with a little rubber band from Vic Firth. And I have these Steve Smith Tala ones that just like the plastic ones, you can adjust a little bit, but I wasn't overly a fan of these ones. I like the sound of these two a lot as you can come up with some cool kind of thin sounds that I just thought were pretty cool. And I have used these before when recording some of my ambient videos. So head back to some of those and check them out. I'll link them in the description as well. And finally, we have probably the section that a lot of you percussionists are gonna hate. And that is some hard plastic mallets, some brass mallets, and some triangle beaters. Now, of course, just like wood mallets and some of those harder plastic ones, like I mentioned before when I was talking about xylophone mallets, be very careful playing with these. I played incredibly light with both of the Glock mallets I have here, and honestly, I'm not really a fan of how these sound. And try scraping with these, they're all right for that. I can't really suggest using brass mallets or even these harder plastic ones. Get a Glock and Spiel. I can't really suggest using these ones too much. I definitely think the risk of damaging the bars is way higher than the inconvenience of it is to get a glockenspiel. So composers, if you're writing using brass mallets or hard plastic mallets on the vibes, 
don't be too shocked if the vibe player or the percussionist just says, no, I'm not doing that because honestly, I hated using these. The triangle beaters, on the other hand, actually, I kind of liked. Especially this lighter one, I kind of liked tapping it on there. Again, be careful, but it does come up with some cool sounds. This one, the lighter one, I really liked. The medium one, not so much. The heavy one, I did not like at all. I would say maybe a very light one, but again, don't be surprised if the percussionist says no. So of course this last section, I recommend you experiment with what you have around your house. This can include using a stress ball, a water bottle, a cardboard box, a can, some pencils, or even a cat. So there you have it. Those are some ideas that you can use to get some different sounds on the vibraphone with your playing or with your compositions. So comment down below which ones you like the most, which ones you hated the most, or even some of the crazier ones that you've used on the vibes before. If you really like the video, click like and subscribe, as well as leave a comment down below which one of these you like the most, and maybe even tell me how much you hated the fact that I played with brass mallets on a vibraphone. If you still don't hate me after all that, you can still head over to my Patreon to help support the channel, as well as check me out on my other social media accounts. Really hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great week.